Last week in the Wall Street Journal, we were introduced to Patsy Campbell. Now, this is a fascinating story. She's 71 years old. She lives in this home in central Florida. And listen to this, you guys. I don't see the home, but imagine it, if you will. Close your eyes, imagine a house. Uh, she hasn't paid her mortgage in 25 years. Close your eyes and imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> the banks have been fighting to kick her out of her home to foreclose, but the case keeps getting delayed because the bank missed deadlines or Patsy finds various loopholes so she can stay put. I think she's oh, been wow. through two or three husbands since then. <laughs> I read Are, that in the oh, paper, okay. in the Wall All Street right. Journal. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not kidding. Yeah. Wow. The foreclosure has outlasted, oh, there we go. Two marriages. Two marriages, three recessions, and four presidents. So Nothing safe. can keep her down, right? <laughs> now, we have two types of checks around here. We have reality check and realty check. This morning, we're doing both reality and realty check. We're talking about the consequences when you skip out on your mortgage. Alexis, you, know, you did a lot of research. We are talking about this last hour yes. on this story, right? Yes. Uh, I found out that Nevada comes in number one in the country for foreclosures. Probably not too surprising. We know how bad they're hurting. Mm. Uh, Phoenix. Arizona, number two. Uh, so some people, they don't have the choice. They have to walk away. There's not even an option. But then there's the people that are kind of on the fence. They may be able to afford their home, but they're not sure if they should walk away. Well, then you think about it. I'm making this payment for this house, and it's uh, it's worth a lot less uh, than what I'm my. What, what you I paid owe, for it, yes. and it, it'll never go back it's up to where it was. Come back to those so why prices. should? Why don't I just rent? Right. What's the big deal about real estate anymore in this country? So should you walk away? We talked to a couple experts. Here's what they had to say. More than half of homeowners here in the Valley are in a tough financial situation. Right now, 51% of all the homes in Phoenix are underwater, which means people owe more than the, the value of the home. Well, a lot of people are going to walk away from those. And that's the question, to walk or not to walk. The answer is that it's not as simple as you can just do it. But for a lot of people, it is the right economic decision. The Fruitkin Law Firm helps people facing foreclosure. They say Arizona is one of the easier states to walk away. Typically, the bank can't come after you unless you've borrowed money against your home. You might be one who got a home equity line of credit, bought a car, or bought uh, a pool, or paid for other things using that money. That could result in both tax ramifications and a lawsuit from that lender. Before you mail in the keys, things to think about. A foreclosure stays on your record for seven years. A short sale, two to three years. It can drop your credit score anywhere between 50 to 300 points, making it hard to buy a car, a home, and weighing heavy on your conscience. The moral issue is you don't walk away from your debts, you don't walk away from your contracts unless you absolutely have to. Because essentially, if that happened, uh, a society couldn't function. So why aren't banks working with more people to help keep them in their homes? Because there are so many homes underwater, banks simply don't have enough capital to deal with the issue. They literally can't do it. Just to give you an idea of how big this problem is, today in Arizona, there are 45,000 homes in the foreclosure process. In 2006, there were only 3,000. So when could things finally get better? There is no quick way out. We have a long way to go. It'll be 2014 before things get back to normal. Okay, so one of the top economists in our state, Elliot Pollack, says 2014, that's when he thinks things will probably start getting a little bit better. I have a great deal of respect for him, Elliot yes. Pollack. 2014, it's yeah. three years, four yes. years, three years. Yeah, three years. We're almost wow. at the end of 2010. Yeah. So uh, we wrote on our Facebook page looking for people with mortgage stories, and Wayne in Phoenix told us he intentionally walked away from a mortgage. He moved to Phoenix last year. He was losing $2,000 a month on another home he had in Northern Virginia. He said he could have tried to pay the mortgage, but it just didn't make sense. So he walked away from the home. Wayne says, nothing personal. It's a survival of the business. That business is business, like they said in The Godfather. It's business. Uh, the bank sold the home at auction back in November. So... So and what now, do you do? It's, well, it's we, everyone's own personal choice. It was it two weeks ago we talked to Susie Orman, and I asked her, and I said, well, what if you're making the payments on your home, and, you know, you, you're, you still have the cash flow, you got a job and all that, right. but you know your ho home is never going to go back to the value it was. Right. She said the best thing to do, it's never going to go back. 
in your lifetime, best thing to do is just walk away. Just walk away. So what are the ramifications? You have to deal with those, but... And you need to look into that before yeah. you walk away. Yeah. Get MyFoxPhoenix.com on your iPhone free at the App Store and stay connected.